My lord, ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to Hard Mode Transport Fever 2. Starting this episode just outside our station, passenger station I should clarify, that we built in the previous episode or so. Here at Portis Head, off in the distance there, over the trees, we can see the, the skyline of West Ham. And just coming around the corner now, we can even see our passenger mainline train that we got set up in the last episode. I'm waiting to pick up a load of passengers here at Portis Head, as we can see, it's very, very busy, which is really, really nice to see. So, already we've got good passenger generation. So, before this train even gets alongside, I think it's not going to be a bad idea if we add a couple of extra carriages onto this train. So, we'll do that first of all. That's the first thing we're going to do, since it makes sense to do it before it stops and picks up the passengers. So, didn't want to clone it, or did I want to clone it actually? Yes. Yes, we probably do want to clone the train. I don't think one is enough. But we also want to go ahead and add a few extra passenger wagons on. And I'm going to double the capacity to 68. What does that do for our speed? Still pretty good speed. 62 miles an hour on the flat and medium grades. And on the flat we're getting there in about 85 seconds, which is pretty damn rapid. So we'll do that. We need to colour those. There we go. Uh, so yes, that's the first thing we're doing today. Other than that, as we can see, we've got a decent amount of money. I've also made a few other changes between the episodes. This train delivering the bricks into Portishead has been extended, as has our platform here to accommodate the increased length in the train. So that's all working fine so far. One thing I did want to do today is set up a food delivery shuttle from our food processing plant here at Portishead that will run over the river and drop off into Portishead itself. That way we are then supplying the two cargo demands that Portishead has for growth and we should see some further development here in Portishead thanks to that. Before we set up this road however we do want to upgrade it to a more modern style road so that's the first thing we'll do before we set up the pickup point and I dare say we might even go for a large road on this one so we'll upgrade as far as in fact we'll get rid of that for now we'll just redo the road entirely and what we want to do is we want to upgrade this bridge here although that that shipyard there is just in the way so let's upgrade this bridge and then we want to start upgrading the road into Portishead itself and I'm just doing small sections here using shift so this road here is where our food delivery trucks are going to run and it's also going to serve as a connection point to the next city which is Baracknell and then what we're going to do is going to have this as a one continuous road rather than the curves and the wiggles and it was doing it originally and we'll just do it like this cut down on any unnecessary curves as I said make it a lot more efficient for them and let's in fact just work this junction a little better as well now while I'm doing this I just want to say to you all that we've recently tipped over 400 subscribers for the channel which is absolutely amazing uh, really really pleased with that it just it's nice to know shall we say that uh, there's enough of you out there to follow along and to subscribe and I want to thank you well those of you who have subscribed I want to thank you for your support if you haven't you know no problem if you're just watching without subscribing that's also fine obviously uh, people are free to do as they choose and that's absolutely fine no judgments or anything or no disappointments if you don't want to subscribe but for those that you have have yeah it's it's good thank you very much anyway let's uh let's continue on with this truck station now and the delivery line is ported so we can unpause the game now we're only going to need for now one platform on this one and we'll have the pickup point sort of like this although i would prefer it if it was level with the road but we can 
raise it up just a little. Oh no, you can drop it straight back down, are you? Okay. But in that case, then we'll have it sort of like there. And I think that's roughly the same height as the road. Yeah, it's close enough anyway, better than it was trying to do previously. And then we'll just get this connected in nice and easy. Like that, and then like that. Perfect. We don't need the traffic lights there, so we can get rid of those. And we'll just rename this to Portishead Food Factory. Okay, and then we want to put our drop-off point for Portishead. Now, one thing I have done as well off camera is I've just ever so slightly tweaked the location of these drop-off points. If you remember, originally this industry drop-off point was more like here on this street. I've just pushed it over a little because there had been new industries constructed in Portishead that were no longer covered by the initial location. So this, I do believe, covers... Well, it doesn't cover everything. As we can see, we have one here that's out of reach. But what we can do for that is actually just delete it. And in fact, we'll delete that as well. And that. And we'll encourage them to have a road that's a little bit closer to our drop-off point. And they then should be covered in theory, but we'll see when they start to build. But enough about that, we need to put down the pickup, or sorry, the drop-off point for the food. Now, as you can see, we're concentrated more to the left side, although we do have a few stragglers up to the north towards the train station. Now, to get a decent catchment on this, again, what we're going to do is put in a manual road just there. It's going to remove a few buildings, but that's, that's what we have to do, and so be it. And then what we'll also do, well, they've built one road there, but I prefer if that was a, a larger capacity road. We'll finish that off for them. And I'm tempted to bring a road down here as well. It's going to remove quite a few of the industries. But they will rebuild. And it just keeps everything working and uh, spreading out and developing a lot more naturally. Again, they're going for the small streets probably better off having medium capacity around here and then what we need to do is find a nice place for this unload point now our trucks are going to come this way or we could have them come this way if we wanted to either way they're coming in from the south and i think in fact i think we'll have them we'll build this road we'll upgrade it and this one connected into this road here and then our trucks can come up here along the top ways here and then if we have the drop off point there or on that side I'd say this side because there's covering too much industry which is not really needed if we do it here it'll cover any further expansion out this way so we'll do that and then as I said probably not a bad idea at this point to upgrade this it's going to cost a lot but it's worthwhile doing and then what we can do is bring this down towards our country road and then we'll actually swap to country roads from this point keep this straight and connect that in like so again we probably don't need the traffic lights so we'll get rid of them nor do we need all those traffic lights that have been generated in portishead itself so we can get rid of some of these We'll keep this one as it's a four way and it's a major junction. We don't need that one, I shouldn't say, but we'll keep an eye on the traffic and we'll see. We can always put them back in if we need to. So yes, the trucks will come down here and then we can, assuming they don't come this way naturally, we'll put a waypoint on this little street here to guide them around back down here over the bridge and to the Portishead Food Factory truck station. So let's get that set up now. So this is food, so this is the lighter of the oranges. And we're going there, fully loaded. We'll have an infinite maximum waiting time. We will set the load and unload orders just to make sure everything works as it should and there's no, no issues later on down the line. 
and then you come down there. They have to cross themselves here, but it's not going to be a constant stream of trucks. So I think that's going to be okay. That shouldn't hold them up too much. And we'll just rename this line now. And that's the food delivery line to Portishead. We'll also rename this to Portishead Commerce Drop-Off. Like so, Portishead Commerce Drop-Off. So that's all working as intended. In fact, they might have rerouted now. No, they didn't. I thought they might have changed their route to use this new road that the AI just built, but they did not. I'll keep that as a small road because why not? And then we'll get rid of that traffic light that's just been generated. So that's the delivery line set up. Now it's just a time or a case of getting the trucks just going to turn off the expenditure numbers there here's our truck depot and in fact what we'll do is save a bit of journey time we'll connect this depot in from this side into here absolutely do not need traffic lights here that's a guarantee so we'll get rid of those and that way these trucks can just come off to the left and head straight to the food factory without having to go all the way round and through Portishead so let's buy the vehicles what do we want? That's going to be the tarpaulin trucks. And I think for the start, we shall go for just say five. Just to get things started, just to get the line bedded in, and just to get a rough idea as to what our line rates are going to look like. And then we can tweak them as necessary. So, as we can see in Port, it said we're hitting 80%, 155 out of 192. That is jumped up a little bit there. If we look at our line rates and look at our visible lines, wrong screen, that's what I want. There we go. So they have a rate of 181. The Bricks Freight Train has a rate of 200. So both of those are meeting technically the demand for port is said. So we'll leave that for now. Let's we'll check West Ham as well, see how they're doing. 172, 90%, perfect. No changes are going to be needed there for the foreseeable future, so that's fine. We can leave them to it. Just have a look at our main line here. Where's our destinations? So we have 106 heading straight to Nuneaton. A lot of people going to Nuneaton from Portishead. And what about Nuneaton itself? How are we doing over here? 202, and they, well, most of them are heading to West Ham. Now that to me says we can probably do with an express service between West Ham and Nuneaton that bypasses Portishead. Now I was thinking about this actually before I started recording and uh, somebody did leave a comment and I think it was the, not the previous episode, the one before, when we started setting up the passenger main line saying that the Flying Scotsman lends itself, I've got the date paused, silly 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 yes saying that the flying scotsman lends itself perfectly to an express service and i would agree however i did a bit of testing and because our carriages are currently limited to 62 miles per hour we would not get full speed utilization out of the flying scotsman if we look here it can do 75 so we're losing 13 uh, potential mile per hour units of speed and this upkeep maintenance cost per year is quite high especially compared to what we are using the A35 it's an extra 400,000 so I think what we're going to do is even though we're going to think of it as an express line between West Ham and Nuneaton it's not going to be any faster than our current mainline train because we're going to use the same locomotive and carriages all it's going to be is it's not going to be a stopping service so it won't stop at Portishead it'll go straight from Runneaton to West Ham and then we'll keep our mainline train stopping at all three so we'll do that now as well and so we're going from Nuneaton to West Ham we'll call this the inter look as I said we're going to call it the express and I suppose if you're wanting to get to West Ham from Nuneaton, this is more an express train than the main line because you don't stop at Portishead, so there's no slowdown there, so it will be faster. 
and this is as i said nuneaton west ham there we go now i've noticed or i could see here we're going to be interfering with our mainline train as we pass through portishead station so what we'll do is after nuneaton we're going to send our train through this way and then after west ham we're going to send it through this way yes that will work i'm not sure why you don't just in fact what we could do is after the need to go that way there we go now this junction needs improving perhaps either later in this episode or at a later point because it just stops quite sharply and at the minute this is going to slow our trains down as they make the turn onto the opposite platforms but for the time being it should be okay and now we can set this train up so we want the we're going to stick with the a35 this flying scotsman will make an appearance but as i said once we have carriages more in line with this engine's top speed so the a35 passenger wagons they both do the same speed but this one is five ton lighter even though it carries three less passengers now i'm quite tempted to go for the six wheeler because i guess that's going to give us more speed yes if we remember the same train pulling four of the donabush carriages got up to top speed in was it 85 seconds this one only takes 75 seconds so there is a marginal improvement is it worth sacrificing three six twelve passengers for in total maybe i'm gonna go for it and i'm gonna again say you know we'll stick with one for now because not everybody is immediately going to take the express train over time they should start swapping over and if we go to nuneaton i can give you i can show you what i mean by this all of these 135 people heading to West Ham now suddenly won't change onto the Intercity Express. Over time they will, but for now, one train's going to be enough. Now, what platforms are we using here? Okay, different platforms there, so that's good. We don't want them sharing. What about over in West Ham? What are they doing there? Okay, you've decided to share there, and for some reason you're also using the outermost platforms. Well, let's just quickly change that around. So the main line can go onto Terminal 1, the InCity Express onto Terminal 2. That's better. Okay, so that's that. That will take a little while to bed in. Let's just take a look on our trams here. How are these doing? I imagine these have fallen off quite a bit, yes. They're now operating at a loss. And I imagine we're not that busy anymore. Not really. We'll keep the service running, even if it's not making major profits. I guess, obviously, people are now just more tempted by the, the train transportation, which is fine. This metro is not keeping up at all, as we can see. We had, was it 71 passengers here? Only two over here, so we're keeping up at this station but we're not clearing them away from the rail station quick enough. So I'm going to go ahead and add two more onto that line. We'll quickly check how we're doing in Portishead. Not too bad. We've got 12 waiting, which is fine. What about over here? Yep, that's okay. No tweaks are needed in Portishead. How are we doing here? 41 waiting, two trams. At Central, we only have 14, so we're keeping up here. The bus service is keeping up with the passengers at the bus stops in and around Nuneaton. It's just at the train station, we are not able to keep up. So once again, we'll just duplicate just one tram. And then later on, we might need to sell one again to drive back down to two, but we'll keep an eye on that just to get some of these people away from the train station a little bit faster. So we've got our first passenger on the Intercity Express line. As I said, it's probably going to take a while for that to really bed in and kick in. Here he comes now. I don't think it's made a stop yet. How is our main line trains doing? He is full. And where is our other one? 
Good question. I must have just gone straight past it. Not that one. It's not that one. Uh, oh, here it is. It's just at Nuneaton. See, these are now making very decent money. Even woo, doubling up the uh, the carriages and the trains was a clearly a good idea, as we can see. We do have to make sure, however, that the in-city express line doesn't eat too much into the passengers on the main line. If it does do that, we might want to drop a carriage off the trains, but we'll keep an eye on that and balance it as and when it becomes a potential issue. So, let's just quickly check Porty said how are we doing on the food production slow going for now but that's okay we might need more ships on this line to get a better throughput I think we have six at the moment I dare say I might even jump to eight what's the profits like on this line pretty good some years we make a loss but that's only every now and then the intervening years we do make decent profits so overall we are very profitable i'm going to say yes we'll add in an extra oh, of course i deleted the shipyard didn't i let's just quickly rebuild our shipyard and we'll have it we may as well have it near the docks actually makes a bit of sense perhaps if you have it over this side like just there although i've got a feeling when the ships depart the the berth they're likely just to plow straight through the shipyard there so we'll give them a bit more room and have it over there instead right yes now as i was saying i'm going to go ahead and say we could do with two more ships on this line and we'll keep an eye on that see how it does one thing that was requested quite recently was to share the spreadsheet that I use when it comes to checking line rates and balancing in, getting a rough idea of how many vehicles we're going to need. I can absolutely do that. And in fact, I'll put a link in the description of this video and future videos to the spreadsheet if you'd like to take a look at it yourself. I must stress, as always, it isn't foolproof. It isn't 100% accurate. But in my experience, it does get you pretty close to where you need to be in terms of how many vehicles you need on the line to hit the demand rates at your cities. So use it with a pinch of salt. It might be complete rubbish and I might just be very lucky in that every time I've used it, it's got me roughly where I need to be. Uh, so no guarantees are given. Uh, but yes, I will make it available and people can have a look at it if they want. It's up to you. So yeah, that'll be down below anyway. Anyway, enough about that. What do we want to do next? So we've got our first passenger line set up and that's working quite nicely, as we can see, very popular. We have a decent amount of freight line set up, bricks, and we have a river production line. Well, it's not producing the river, but it's actually using the river shipping. And we have a few, we still have these little early truck loops that are just making us money in the background which is always key on hard mode where do we want to go to next now i did previously talk about the tools here and that's still an option we could look at the bricks into nuneaton now i wouldn't use this i don't think i would use this construction material plant because I do believe we yes there are six cities that require bricks and I believe on the map we have three brickworks so it makes sense for each brickwork to supply two cities so this one's already supplying two cities isn't it it's supplying Portishead and West Ham so we don't really want to overburden this by having a third city attached to it so for Okay, we've got three up here, which is quite unfortunate. And there's no other brickworks north of the river. So I imagine Yoxall is going to have to be supplied from a fair old distance away. Maybe even this one. Because in my mind, this one here at Marlborough would supply Nuneaton and Bakewell. 
and this one here would supply Bracknell and then it would supply all the way up to Yoxall. Or we could just forgo Yoxall's brick supply and we'd artificially limit Yoxall to a fairly small town because you wouldn't be feeding it its full cargo demand, so that's an option. But for, as I said, for Nuneaton, this brickworks makes sense to me. For this we need your stone, which is your basic vanilla commodity, which we have here. Now, as I said, I do want to make sure all my train lines are connected to one another so it's an organic growth out from a central point rather than having completely separate lines all over the map so what we'd have to do is for a cargo station would have to connect it into this line that's not to say any trains would ever run on that line or on that bit of track but it's just to keep them connected so they're joined together and then we'd have the cargo line run down over the river here and then through into the quarry. That would be quite easy to do. And then from Nuneaton it would just run on as well to Bakewell. Because Bakewell would be drawing her supply of bricks from the same plant. That will take a bit of planning to make sure it all looks neat and tidy and organised. So we might come back to that a little bit later. We could instead think about extending our passenger line out towards Swinton or up to Rothbury to bring more into the fold. Or we could have a more local line that connects Nuneaton to Market Raise and the two towns are very close together after all. It would make sense to do that. I imagine we're going to have perhaps two passenger main lines We'd have this one we have here. We could obviously extend it, say, up to Blythe, Nuneaton, Portishead, West Ham, and then up to Rothbury or Swinton, or both. And then everything else, like such as Lewis, Yoxall, and Market Raisin, and Bakewell, would just be served by local services. And then we'd have a second main line down here. And this one would likely run from Wareham to Bracknell, Burton, and on to Marlborough. With a local service to Whitnash and to Highworth. And then obviously we'd have a connection from Whitnash to Swinton that would keep all our lines connected together. So that's just me basically planning for the future and how I see this developing. So we'd have two, a northern main line and a southern main line, if you will. With, as I said, local services connected to other local towns nearby as well. Just to keep everything on the network, but not every city has to hit the main line, obviously, because that's not how it works in real life either. Any of the towns that are on the main line, West Ham, Portishead, Nuneaton, possibly Blythe and Rothbury or whatever, they're the ones we're going to focus on growing by hitting both of the trade goods or cargo goods that they require. The more local towns will just, well, we'll keep them perhaps a little more limited in their growth. We'll supply them with some of their goods. Even if we supply both, but only do a couple of deliveries per year, so the rates are quite low, that'll, again, artificially suppress their town growth. And that'll just give us that large town, small town sort of feeling, which is always nice because it's always a bit bizarre when every single city on your map is a major metropolis. That's not how it works in real life. It's nice to have that separation. Anyway, enough waffling. Let's have a look at how things are doing over here. Okay, so the brick supply isn't quite meeting up. What's causing the issue here? Well, we're still having good rates. I wonder if it's just a further expansion on the industry side it means we are no longer hitting full catchment. Let's just have a look at the cargo. In fact, no. If we just pause it and bring up this. So we, now we're getting pretty decent coverage. The only two we're not hitting are these two out here. And we might be ha able to hit them if we connect a street in between them and into this street here. 
sort of like this. Connect in. Where are you? There we go. That might then... No, it doesn't lead to catchment. And in fact, it's just balked it because these are no longer being captured either. Okay, so we might need to move that once again. So if we were to have that... Okay, the trouble is you can't... There we go. If we move that back this way, I think that's a better place for it given the expansion of the industrial sector. I can't see that there's anything being missed off. So we're going to do that. We'll just let this truck make its delivery and depart and then we'll delete that and amend the line. Go on, clear off. There we go. So we want to know where are we? The bricks delivery. You are heading to this station. There we go. And you're now doing a full loop thanks to this road that we put in. That's nice to see. Yes, Victoria will rename that to industry or Porty said industry drop off. There we go. And we'll see what sort of effect that has. In fact, we'll just boost up the speed a little bit. And then we can see what sort of effect that's going to have on our delivery rates into Portis Head. How's this train doing since we upgraded it? Yeah, pretty good. Again, there's the odd occasion where we make marginal profits, but overall we're doing pretty nicely. In fact, how if we just do this, look at all the lines. So this is not making a profit at the moment, which is fine. Didn't think it would be. It's going to take a while for the passengers to want to use this service. The inner city metro at West Ham is making a loss. And if you remember, that's the service we expanded to deal with the crowding over here. To be fair, we can now probably get rid of one of those trains. Trains? Trams because we seem to have eaten through the backlog. So I think what we'll do is, how many do you have on board? If we can catch this before it picks anybody up, we'll sell this one. Okay, so it's picked up a couple, but never mind. And we'll just deal with that. Bit more pick up on the InCity Express, but nothing too dramatic yet over here. That's as was. And how are we doing over here? Okay, again, we've seen a bit more passenger generation for the InCity Express line. Where is the InCity train? And that's the main line. What are you? You're the InCity. I'm going to say we'll get rid of a few carriages of this one for now. We don't need this many. We'll drop down to two. And that's going to do wonders for the train's power. Let's just have a look here. There you go, just over a minute to get to top speed is very, very rapid. And that's going to ever so slightly boost the line frequency and rate. So we might see a bit more passenger generation on the InCity Express. I do believe the game takes into account your line's frequency when determining the, the route taken by your residents. So that's something to bear in mind. We might be waiting forever for that to pick up if the rate is too slow other than that thing seems to be going okay this isn't yet fully bedded in i think once these two new ships that we just purchased settle in this should jump up a little i'd like this to be a lot higher but then again we're still getting quite a lot of supply 172 is a decent amount i mean if you look at how much they're actually demanding 235 that is a lot of construction materials they're asking for It might be a case of we're not keeping up here. Let's just see what happens. Yes, see, we're having these lulls in production. So what we're going to have to do is expand this train just a little. So we want cargo units. They're gondolas, colour, this colour. What will that do for our speeds? Still insanely fast, 51 seconds. So let's do that. And then we'll see what sort of effect that's going to have. How are we doing over here? We're not at max level yet, but we are producing 600. So there should be plenty waiting for the train when it gets here. Now, one thing I would like to do 
quickly, very quickly, I've got it paused, so in fact we don't have to be quick at all, is where is our junction? There it is. Is extend this cargo platform, because our train is a lot longer than this train station, and it always looks a bit too weird for my money. So let's extend the cargo platforms outwards a little. Something like that. We don't need high speed tracks. So we'll do that and then get rid of that and then just reconnect this into this. There we go. That way our train won't be overhanging the end of the platform. In fact, we can tell now just as it comes alongside. I think we're going to be long enough. Oh yes, more than. Look at that, fully loaded straight away. While we're here, I'm just going to smooth off some of this terrain here that we've just worked on. There we go. And now that this train's on its way back, in fact, no, it won't be a true representation yet because the last two wagons weren't actually loaded the last time it dropped off. That's now making us 1.3 million. As I said, we're not really seeing a true reflection on how we're doing in terms of our stockpiled stone. We will see how we're doing next time around, however, so we just hang around for a moment and in fact what we can do is pin this and pin this and then we can move away keep an eye on this in the top corner and when we notice it's getting close to dropping off we'll just check this number down here how are you doing oh nice pick up on the main line there 20 passengers what about over here at Nuneaton wherever you are there you are nine so much better pickup. Still don't need the extra carriages on the express train yet. In fact, where is our? There it is. No, it's not. That's the main line. Okay, how are we doing? We're still running dry. Well, that's very interesting. We might even need one more wagon. Let's do that. There we go. And we'll see how that does. Ah, so this is jumped up. In fact, no, it hasn't. It was around 170 last time. So I think the problem might be the supply. Although it does say we're having a rate of 200 on this line. Right. Perhaps then we're just getting to the point at Port is said where it's just demanding too much. Although it has jumped up there now, as we can see. So maybe, just maybe, it was a production issue over here that was causing the slowdown. As we can see, we're actually quite close to uh, upgrading. We're meeting the production threshold, the transportation threshold. We just don't have enough coal from the nearby towns. 4.30, and if we look here, we'll see that's these two numbers combined. So for this industry to expand we need these to increase now as we can see portisets has been increasing so if we could convince west ham's industry to expand as well then we'd expand this and then we should be able to better meet demand at portishead so it's all interlinked anyway here comes the train on the return journey since we added yet another new carriage on so let's just see how this does Ideally, as I said, we don't want this hitting zero at all because it will build up over time into quite a lost uh, bit of production time. How are we doing? That's better. Just getting there in time. And what's that done for our finances? Well, it's always been profitable. We can see when we upgraded the train quite clearly. And we'll just keep this to a 10-year graph. There we go. So we can get rid of those now. They're working fine. So if we want to grow West Ham, we need to get the tools in here. So that's something we need to revisit. If you remember, I did look at it briefly before. Still need to decide which tool factories are serving up which city. Because as with the brickworks, we don't want to overburden one factory supplying, say, three or four cities while another factory is only supplying one because the one supplying three or four which will not keep up with the demand. I mean, we're already seeing it with this factory here. It's not keeping up with demand for Portishead. Well, they'll be getting a lot better. This has also jumped up a little bit as well, so that's good to see. We've got quite a bit waiting on the platform. 
So I think adding the extra ships onto this line has worked quite well for us. So our inner city bus at Portishead is looking popular all of a sudden, not sure why that is. Either way, I think it's probably worthwhile adding an extra vehicle on there, we'll just go for one. Right, should we uh, find a nice place to jump on board or sit around and watch things come and go? Perhaps we'll... Well, we started at the station, should we finish at the station as well? Oh, no, 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 let's go over to Nuneaton. This way we'll be able to see our intercity express train although saying that it would be quite nice to see the express train just fly on through this station so yes we'll sit here next to uh, amber just here so just hide the ui so yes it's no it's not a cab ride or a train ride this episode it's just a little place to sit down and watch the comings and goings of the map if we just move back a bit maybe like that yes so uh a bit this yeah this episode was mainly mainly tweaking a few lines balancing a few rates up on that obviously we did put up the food delivery line into Portishead, head and we've put in the express service from nuneaton to west ham but in terms of new builds not much today yes it was primarily focused on balancing a few things out here comes our main line train there now but in hard mode, that's what you have to do, and there is quite an, a decent amount of enjoyment to be had in taking the time to make sure your lines are running as efficiently as they can be and you're working as well as you can be, rather than just brute forcing it or accepting your current line rates as good enough. So there is a lot to be said for it. In the next episode, I think we will look to get some tool production set up for West Ham. And that way we should trigger further growth in West Ham, which should trigger further growth in its industrial sector, which should help our brickwork factory over by, is it Portishead? I can't remember what it's actually classed as. No, it's West Ham, isn't it? Yeah, West Ham Construction Materials. Yes, yeah, should see that expand, which is going to help Portishead quite a lot, I should imagine. But yes, sir. Uh, once again, like I said towards the start, thank you very much for all your subscriptions. Hitting 400 is truly amazing. Obviously, uh, never really expected it. And I still don't, you know, have any grand schemes or designs or plans. I just like to trundle along and whatever will happen will happen. And that, in a way, that makes the support all the more moving if you will so thank you very much for that as you can see in the distance there the into city express train has just switched over to the outer platforms that uh, crossover is quite slow it slowed it down quite substantially so we might have to look at that improve that little junction to help keep this train to speed up as much as we can there she goes now getting distracted uh, Yes, so all that means for me to say is, as always, ladies and gentlemen, take very good care of yourselves. It's Tata for now.